Welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks for joining us. Now it's time to bring you the buzz on Bloomington Today for the week of April 3rd through the 9th. On March 23rd, Bloomington Civic Plaza was alive with writers, publishers, authors, and readers. According to event organizers, the 10th Annual Writers' Festival and Book Fair surpassed all expectations. Bloomington Literary Council Chairperson Kate Pettit said between four and 500 people attended this year's festival. Informational booths line the hallways of Civic Plaza, some a part of the book fair, others offering aspiring writers resources on how to get started. The event also gave attendees a chance to meet the authors of their favorite fiction, nonfiction, and even children's books through a series of author readings. Little Maggie sent Santa a short Christmas note, but you'll never believe what the bold young girl wrote. She had just one request, and she made it quite clear that she wanted to go on his sleigh ride this year. A series of separate workshops and a keynote address by author Tom Hegg were also popular among festival goers. All proceeds from the Writers' Festival go toward the cost of programs not only for the Bloomington Literary Council, but also Bloomington Theatre and Arts Center's educational programs. Bloomington's Noon Rotary is pleased to announce its fourth annual Community Shredding event. Mark your calendars, everyone. The event is set for Saturday, May 4th from 9 a.m. until noon in the west parking lot of Bloomington Civic Plaza. The cost is just $5 per average size box of personal documents, canceled checks, medical and legal information, and whatever else you'd like destroyed. All the documents are shredded on site while you watch, thanks to ShredWrite. And new this year, computers and cell phones can be recycled as well for just $5. All proceeds go to the Bloomington Noon Rotary, which in turn helps to support local nonprofit organizations, programs, and charities within the city. Bloomington and Richfield Park and Recreation have teamed up to introduce a new summer program. And if you want to get in on the game, you have to get into the water. Well, the twist on our uh, traditional water polo is instead of being in the water with the tubes, you'll actually be on top of the water. So um, you'll actually be sitting in the tube playing basically by normal water polo rules. So it's for anybody, um, adults or 18 plus. Registration is taking place right now and the league begins June 5th at Valley View Middle School Pool. It's really an opportunity for people to play water polo without the physical strength it takes to play normal water polo. This provides an opportunity to play a game that's generally enjoyed by a lot of people, but um, with a little less of the complete physical nature of it, so providing that we give them a tube. Registration forms can be found on the city's website and can be submitted to Bloomington Parks and Recreation online by mail or in person. Call 952-563-8880 for any further details. And it's that time of the year where the ice is questionable at best. Residents are asked to take notice of the thin ice signs displayed around many of the city's lakes and ponds. According to the Minnesota DNR, spring is the time to simply stay off the ice. Warming daytime temperatures paired with the sun's warmth create melting. Then refreeze occurs as temps go down at night giving the illusion of solid ice, when really it could just be a thin layer with open water underneath. Another thing to keep in mind, ice rarely freezes uniformly. So what may still be three feet thick in some places on a lake or pond could only be inches in other areas. At the April 1st City Council meeting, Council approved a plan that will put the 2014 Highland Multimodal Trail Project in motion. This project will be the final connection between the existing Highland Lake Park Reserve Trail to the Bloomington Ferry Bridge Road River Crossing Trailhead. Clearly, based on the volumes of the existing users we have today, this route can, can and is already being used by commuter and on-road cyclists. The objective of this off-trail connection is to provide connectivity and accommodations for the recreational bike riders and users. 
Three options were presented to the City Council. Option A proposed a 10-foot trail with a 5-foot boulevard where tree removal would be needed. Option B slightly curved the proposed trail, which would save two oak trees. Option C ended up being the best choice for the city, according to council vote. Option C includes a 10-foot wide trail with a 5-foot boulevard again. This option would narrow Bloomington Ferry Road four to six feet, along with reducing tree removal and property acquisition. This option will also improve site light dis issues at West 112th Street. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. Motion carries 5-2 with Wilcox and Halting opposed. In every single instance where a bike path has been put in, property values have increased. Every single instance. I, I don't think you could find an instance where that isn't the case, whether it's Minnesota or across the country. So uh, I, 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 I'm looking at this as a, as a community-wide asset. I'm looking at this as a city-wide uh, something that is desired by the city and I'm looking at, at this not only as a, a council member but also as a Bloomington taxpayer myself as something that I'm willing to to take on and, and make uh, make this improvement to our community. The Highland Multimodal Trail Project is set to begin in early summer of 2014. And that is the buzz on Bloomington today for the week of April 3rd through the 9th. Thanks for joining us.